What's going on guys? Today we're doing a 10,000 haul. So in this video, we're gonna record my measurements and then discuss every single pair of 10,000 shorts, their hoodie, their short sleeve shirts, and their long sleeve shirts. And the hope here is that you can take my measurements and my assessment of every product and then apply it to your own needs. So if you are thinking about investing for the first time, you can make your call on that. Or if you're deciding on a new product, I can hopefully help you out. And if you're interested in any specific product, I'm gonna link everything down in the description below and timestamp it so you can jump straight ahead to the part of the video where I discuss what you're interested in. Without further ado, let's dive into my measurements. Now we're gonna take my measurements. So I'm gonna put all, all my measurements up on the screen at one point so you can easily screenshot it and then compare it to yourself so you can more accurately assess how things will likely fit you. What are we looking for my shoulders? 48 for my shoulders. And also guys, I'm about six foot and 180 pounds. Um, generally on my dating profile, I'll say like 6'1", 6'2". He's 5'11". That's true. <laughs> okay, first off, <laughs> first off. My chest is... 38. 38? Damn, girl, what are you trying to... I know, every time. I'm trying to different. limit inches on my pecs. Yeah, 32 and a half for the waist. And then we are going to the hips. 39. Thigh, 23 for my thigh, and the final measurement we'll do is my inseam. It's right at about 32. 32 inseam. So again, I'll have everything up on the screen so you can screenshot everything really easily and you'll know exactly how everything's gonna fit. I did decide to get medium and large shorts because the biggest question I get from guys who are similar in stature to me, so around like six foot, 5'11", 5 5'11", 5 and uh, like 175, 180 pounds, their biggest question is like, should I go medium, should I go large? So hopefully I can help you out with my measurements, but also with the two pairs of shorts. All right guys, so before we dive into every individual short, I quickly wanna go over sizing and fit with you. So this is a medium in the 10,000 shorts. So generally all the medium and larges will feel very similar depending on if they have liner or not. So you can expect the same when it comes to the waistband and how the legs kind of fit. But this is a medium short. When I flex up, it does get stuck up a little bit more than what a large would. The waist feels a lot more true for my measurements and when I tighten it all up, we don't have a lot of overlap up here in the waistband. Note this is a foundation short. Every short's waistband will be a little bit different. Now let's look at the large. All right, so the large. Definitely have a little bit more room down here in the legs. Doesn't get hung up nearly as much as the medium does. And note, this is a linerless foundation short, and there might be a little bit of discrepancy based on if you get a liner or not. But waistband, a little bit more room too. So based on your measurements, hopefully this will give you a good idea if you're a large or a medium, if you're around my body weight and height. But overall, I think I'm definitely more of a medium in their shorts, and that's actually what I usually go to anyways. So overall, here's how the large fits. A large will technically work for me, but a medium definitely fits more true. All right, so the first short I wanna cover is the foundation short. This is actually the short that turned me on to 10,000 in the first place. And the main reason is because out of all of their shorts, this is definitely probably the most durable and thick when it comes to the outer shell. It has a two-way stretch material, so it doesn't have as much stretch and it's definitely not as light as like, let's say the interval or the session short. And it is designed to be much more durable and abrasion resistant. So if you're somebody like myself who does powerlifting and you're dragging that barbell up a lot during deadlifts or if you're doing cleans and so forth, you're not gonna have a lot of friction on the front and breakdown. This is a medium linerless foundation short. I like this short with both the liner and without. Since it's a heavier short, I think it feels a little bit more natural at times to almost have a separate liner in this or even rock it without the liner if you're feeling crazy. But overall, that's what you can expect with this short. I like to use it for heavier barbell training and going on like longer hikes where I'm gonna be climbing and stuff where I don't want a short to be too light to where it's getting caught on things and like really kind of breaking down too quickly. Um, we have two pockets, two deepish pockets. We have a zip pocket over here. Now you can stick your phone in this pocket. It stretches a little bit, but definitely not the best for larger phones. I usually stick my keys in there during runs if I wear these for runs. But overall, that's the foundation short. The price on this short goes from 58 to $68. And based on the sizing and fit and how you like to train, I would definitely recommend reaching for this short if you are a barbell athlete or somebody who wants a short to resist abrasion or just go the distance when it comes to how long the short's gonna last. All right, so the next short we're gonna talk about is the interval. So this is a seven inch interval short 
with a liner. Personally, I have never tried this short without a liner and the reasoning being is that the outer shell is much more lightweight than the foundation, so it feels way more natural just to have the liner baked in. Personally, that's what I always recommend too. Unless you really like to have your liner separate, honestly, I would opt for the liner interval if you go for this pair of shorts. Now, what is this short good for? Personally, I call it a jack of all trades. So when people ask me, hey, what kind of 10,000 short would you recommend trying? Or at least like maybe first buying. The jack of all trades interval short. This thing is lightweight, it resists sweat, it has a four way stretch. So no matter what you're doing, this short will work. You can heavy barbell train in it, you could run in this short, you can do more of your like plyometric based movements in this short, and it never really feels heavy, never feels bogged down, never feels limiting in nature. At times, the foundation short, in my opinion, is not the best for more cardiovascular activities because it is a little bit heavier. But overall, I think the interval is much more conducive to a jack of all trades. Plus, we have a waistband that doesn't have any really big overlap. So in the foundation, you have that top portion where you tie together in the interval, strings on the inside, so boom, tie it up, and there's not gonna be any overlap. You could tuck that in. So then that way, if you do ever have any long duration activities, you don't have any friction on that waistband. So the odds of this coming undone are way less than in the foundation short. So I do think it's a better option for anybody who likes functional fitness and so forth. And the price for this short comes down to like 58 to 68 dollars, depending on what model you get and if you get liner, non-liner, etc. So who I would recommend the interval short for? Anybody who wants a versatile short that they can wear for literally anything. This short is honestly great for barbell training despite my love for foundation and barbell training, so can't hate on it there. And honestly, if you are looking for a short that's just gonna be great for day-to-day -day wear too, I think the interval is the call. The next short we're gonna discuss is the session short. So this is a medium five inch session short with a liner. Again, I always opt for liner in this option too because it is very lightweight. And I'll usually go for a seven inch. Now, if I'm feeling myself and it's very hot out, I will rock the five inch. But as you can see, you get a lot more thigh for your money with the five inch. So depending on how you like your shorts to fit, scale a five and seven based on what you want and the length of how you want that shell to lay on the legs. But overall, the difference is here from the interval. Much more lightweight, we have a perforated waistband, waistband string on the inside. This short is designed for like cardiovascular activities. So if you're going for longer runs, or if you're doing outdoor workouts where you're just doing repetitive cardiovascular activities, I think session is gonna be the call for you. It has ventilation throughout too, so that's another perk. And then also the pocket. There's only one pocket in this short and it's designed to put your like phone, keys and so forth in. Zip up, boom, easy for run. So overall session short, much more limited in its functionality. But if you are a niche athlete that loves doing cardiovascular activity, then I think the session short will be the call. And the price for this short ranges again from $58 to $68, depending on colorway, liner, non-liner, and so forth. So overall, I'm a fan of the session short, but it's definitely not my go-to for how I like to train. All right, the next short we're gonna review comes from the Pro Line, and this is the tactical short. So this is a seven inch tactical short, liner baked in. And so if you've tried to buy this short and notice that it's sold out, it's, it's hard to get. The tactical and set short in the pro line are tough to get, but they offer a couple really unique features that I think are worth paying attention to, especially the tactical short, which was helped co-created by members of the special, force, the special Ops Force team. So why is this short different? Well, we have a ripstop shell here, so it is a little bit more durable. It dries really, really quickly. Both pockets zip, so there's nice security here on both sides. The left pocket here has an inner pocket there to put your key down into for extra security. And then also the waistband is thicker than all of the foundation, interval, and session shorts. So we have a thicker waistband here, string on the inside, so we can tie that up. We don't have any overlap. And one thing I will say with the tactical short is that the thicker waistband does definitely feel a little bit different and maybe not as, uh, cohesive on the waist as some of the other shorts, like the interval and the session, but it is, again, a thicker material, and that is to prevent any form of breakdown when doing things like rucking or any activity that's gonna put a lot of stress and friction around the waist. But overall, that's the tactical short in a nutshell. This short is a little bit more expensive because it's part of the pro line. It comes out to $72, but overall, I think if you want a short for very much more versatile and durable asks, then a tactical could be a good call, but do note that it's gonna be a little bit more costly than the other shorts on the market. 
All right, so the next product we're gonna talk about is the Midweight Tech Hoodie. So this is a large, light gray hoodie. The price of these products will come out from $98 to $108. And now the biggest question I often get asked about this hoodie specifically is, is it worth it? Because look, at the end of the day, I'm a frugal SOB, so I don't like to spend a lot of money on one singular product. So my biggest question is, is like, is this hoodie worth it? Is it gonna last? What can I use it for? So personally, I like to rock this hoodie for runs and wearing to the gym when I need to stay warm and get warm, but also need a hoodie that can move with me as I get warmed up and so forth. So this has a nice four-way stretch material to it. So it's not one of those hoodies that feels super restrictive and heavy, super good when it comes to the mobility of it. When I reach out, looking at my measurements here, the large doesn't come in. I actually didn't even bother getting a medium and large in the top because I'm a large, medium just feels way too tight. So if you are considering medium or large when it comes to tops, as opposed to the shorts, I didn't get two different sizes. I'm a for sure a large and a medium honestly just looks really awkward on me because I like look way too constricted because I'm just like so big, you know. Uh, but the hoodie itself, big pocket in the front. We have two zip pockets on each side. Personally love that for putting things in to keep them secure. So if I have my key fob for my apartment, I'll throw that into this pocket versus my shorts just to prevent overweighing my shorts on one side if I have my phone in one and so forth. So love the pockets for that. The hood itself is pretty sizable too. Honestly, it depends on how you like your hoods to fit, but usually I'll have on a hat that's forward and I'll have a hood up if I'm trying to stay warm in the colder months. So I'm a fan of the hood itself. Strings around here. We have some silver ion odor protection in here. So this hoodie doesn't actually get that smelly over time as opposed to more of your like just simple cotton based hoodies when you do sweat in them. So this one I can rock for a week or two and not smell too bad. Granted, you'll have to ask my girlfriend for the truth on that matter, but I don't think I smell that bad. We have some 10,000 branding here, but overall, I'm a fan of the hoodie. Just note that it is a little bit more pricey than other hoodie options out there. But I think if you wanna wear this for lighter workouts or to the gym when you get warmed up and you want something to be able to move with you that you can actually train in to some extent, this is a great option to do so. And note that this is the pullover option and not the zip. So they have a zip and a pullover. So overall, I'm a fan of the mid-weight tech hoodie. All right, so diving into the t-shirts. This is the versatile t-shirt and this is a large. I didn't bother getting medium and large in the tops just because the medium is way too tight around my chest and shoulders. And I know that for a fact. So base your selection on my measurements and then go up and down accordingly or grab a large if you're around where I'm at. So versatile shirt. What do I like it most for? So this is my go-to for gym settings where it's, I know I'm gonna be sweating and I necessarily can't take my shirt off and so forth because this is an anti-order shirt, has a lot of stretch to it, has a lot of sweat waking and it breathes really well so it doesn't really hold sweat a lot. So if I am in a gym setting where I can't bust off the shirt or if I'm not outside all the time, versatile shirt's definitely gonna be the play. It's kind of like that mid-weight shirt and it's good for a lot of different activities. This shirt doesn't chafe at all, and it kind of sits good on the arms in my opinion. Shows off the arms a little bit. I mean, I don't have a lot of arms to show, but if I did, <laughs> I would imagine the shirt would look pretty good. So overall, that's what you can expect from the Versatile shirt. It's more of their mid-weight shirt. It's good for a lot of different activities, but now let's try on the Durable shirt. <sighs> all right, the Durable shirt. So this is a large Durable shirt. Fits similar to the Versatile. So one thing I like about all the 10,000 shirts is that all of these shirts, no matter what style it is, in medium, large, and except, uh, extra large, small, and so forth, they all fit very similar. So there's no big discrepancy in between the models. Some companies will have discrepancy in between their models, and I don't really know why, because then it makes sizing very confusing. But overall, this fits just like the Versatile when it comes to the dimensions and so forth. So now, what do I like the Durable shirt for? So this is their heavier shirt. It has anti-odor, it doesn't really chafe, it has some stretch to it, but it's not the best for working out in my opinion, just because it does accumulate a lot of sweat. So I'll actually wear this just on my day to day. So if I'm working from home or going into the office, I will rock this shirt and I honestly think it looks pretty good. I've actually been worn this shirt out before a couple times for the nights in the town and uh, nobody seemed to say anything that, hey, is that a workout shirt, bro? Nobody said anything, but overall, this is like my kind of go-to just for my day to day wear. Um, doesn't break down at all, has some reinforced stitching throughout the sides. So if you want a shirt that you can train in at times, 
but you also want to wear on the day to day. I think the durable shirts to call, especially if you wear, live in colder climates, this is probably going to be your better bet just because it's going to be a little bit heavier, but note that it does accumulate a little bit more sweat. So if you are in a colder climate training in this shirt and you have a lot of sweat accumulation, then it could actually be working against you. So keep that in mind. But overall, that's the durable shirt in a nutshell. It's definitely probably my favorite shirt just because I can wear it on a day to day basis. But now let's try on the lightweight shirt. <laughs> Wait, Maui, what the, what the heck? Dude, I'm filming a video, man, come on. So, the lightweight shirt. This is a large lightweight shirt, and as the name suggests, it is the lightest weight t-shirt that 10,000 makes. So, some things to note about this model is number one, very breathable, non-chafe, and has anti-odor. So, for training outside or doing more cardiovascular activities, this is definitely going to be the call for you. Personally, it's not my favorite t-shirt that they make just because I like having a little bit more weight, but this is a fantastic shirt for longer based activities outside. So if you're going for longer runs and so forth, definitely opt for the lightweight shirt. Plus you're gonna have no chafe. I'm petrified of nipple chafing. So overall, this is how the large fits on me. Very similar to the versatile and durable shirt. But yeah, if you're a cardio athlete, I think the lightweight shirt is definitely gonna be your call. All right, the final product we are gonna cover in this 10,000 haul is the versatile long sleeve shirt. So this is a large, arms fully extended. I don't have it riding up. Personally, I'm a huge fan of that. Could probably maybe go medium in this when it comes to sleeve length, but overall, I just like how the large fits a lot better, especially around the shoulders and chest. So what to expect with this shirt? Very similar to the versatile short sleeve. So we have anti-odor, it stretches pretty well, doesn't accumulate a ton of sweat, and if you're in the gym training and you want a shirt that's going to be a little bit warmer, I would say opt for the long sleeve. Or if you just want a shirt to train outside in, like let's say the fall and spring when it is a little bit more chilly, this is a good option to do so with. No chafing, pretty lightweight, moves really well. So that's pretty much the versatile long sleeve in a nutshell. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite go-to layers as a base layer under like my hoodie and so forth, especially in the colder months. But yeah, this is how the long sleeve versatile large fits. All right guys, that wraps up my 10,000 haul video. Now I will note that I didn't talk on every single product and I'm bummed about it too. Like I couldn't talk about the interval pan, I couldn't talk about the set short, and that's because they were sold out. Even with my plugs at 10,000, I couldn't get those products. So hopefully they're listening and they stock them for the holiday season. But at the end of the day, I'm hoping that this video can help you decide what size to get and if a product is right for you, whether it's your first time buying 10,000 or you're interested in a new product. I pretty much worn everything and if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I will do my best to assist you, especially when it comes to sizing and assisting you when it comes to what type of product you should buy based on your style of training. So until next time guys, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I'll see you later. Quick note guys, before we fully wrap this video up, I do wanna say I have been working with 10,000 since early 2018. When I started working with them, they had four employees. Now they have 15. They also only had five products on the market, and that's when they were trying to really dominate the shorts game. Now they have 16 products. So it's been incredible watching them build and grow as a company. And the reason I continue to work with them is because I truly believe in what they're doing and what they're building. More than likely, you have seen them on Snapchat or Instagram in some form of an ad or in some athlete's profile, and there's a reason for that. Their stuff is great. And if you are somebody who says, oh, that's just an expensive brand, look at premium brands like Lululemon and so forth. The only difference between them and 10,000 is 10,000 makes gear that is used by guys like myself who do powerlifting and so forth and help them wear test their stuff to continually evolve and improve, and it lasts. I literally still have my first pair of 10,000 foundation shorts that have been holding up just fine over two years. I always blow the crotches out in things like Lululemon shorts. So if you want stuff that's gonna last and a company that does have a pretty good return policy when it comes to durability breakdown, check them out. I think they're awesome and at the end of the day, that's why I continue to work with them. Thank you.